Well, good morning. And welcome to worship today. I am Pastor Paige Whitney, the associate pastor here at Grace Lutheran, and I serve with our senior pastor, Jalene Gallatin. And you are here for a very special Sunday. It's Trinity Sunday, Holy Trinity Sunday, but for us what that means is we kind of have three different themes today. So if you leave worship today being like, I'm not sure what today was about, perfect. <laughs> it's about many things and many really important and special things. You're going to hear about mission and the Pine Ridge trip in May. You're going to hear about Holy Trinity, and you're going to hear about our new summer theme. So those are our three things that today's service will include, and so I'm very glad you're here. We'll have announcements and milestones later in the service, but welcome. And if you have any questions or if you haven't filled out a card, the, now they're green, right? If you have not filled out a green card in 2022, you should do that so we know who you are, that you've been here, so we can keep in good touch with you. So please do that and you can place it in the offering plate. I invite you to stand now as we begin with our invocation. Today, we come together to worship in community, as we share water and word, bread and wine, and as we bring God's love and hope to our neighbors in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our confession. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Free us from all that blocks us from loving you and others. Give us courage to seek and trust you. Amen. Hear the good news. God loves and forgives us because he wants to be connected with us. Because this is who God is, we know our sins are forgiven, and we are free to love as God loves. Amen. And we sing together holy, our gathering song, Holy, 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 number 413. I invite you to be seated, and it will be on the screen or in your hymnal.
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, keep us grounded in our faith. Give us your peace and bring us at least into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes to us from Romans, the eighth chapter. For I am conceived that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, not powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will share responsively the Psalm 8. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, but are mere mortals that you should be human beings. Yet you have made them little less than divine, with glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have all things, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. If you're able, would you please rise for the reading of the gospel? Thank you. Today we will hear of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ. You may be seated. And at this time, I'm, I'd love to have any children come forward and join me. Um, yeah, come on up. Little Jesus loves me. Thank you very much. Come on up. I'm going to get my bag. Thank you. Hi. Could we maybe scoot over here? Because there are some of our friends who worship online. You sit there, please, and I'm going to sit here. And when you sit right there, then they can see us a little bit. Hello. Good morning. How are you both doing today? Good. Do you know each other? Yeah? Good. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, it's kind of nice to connect with our friends, huh? Very good. So today is a special day. As Pastor Page mentioned, it's Holy Trinity Sunday. Do you know what that is? Have you ever heard of that? Have you? Wonderful. Good. We're going to talk all about that. Um, do you know what Trinity is? Yeah? That's OK. I, it, Sometimes it can be a little confusing. Do you know what this is? What is do you know what that is? A bicycle. A bicycle. Yeah. How many tires 
are on it. One, two, three. Yeah, sometimes we call it a tricycle since it has three tires on it. Tricycle, there is more stuff in there, isn't it? You wanna to get to the good stuff, huh? Yes, so we're gonna talk about something that has three and yet is one. Sometimes I wonder if we should call this Holy Trinity Sunday because it talks about three and we try to understand it. But I'll get back to you on that. For now, we're gonna call it Holy Trinity, okay? So, there we go. Um, do you, do you know who, who I am? Do you know what you call me? Yeah? Pastor Jeline. Yeah. And we have Pastor Paige over there. So when we're here, most, and probably anywhere when we see each other, we kind of know that, hey, these two people, Pastor Jeline, um, teaches me about love and how much God loves me and how much God loves everyone. So you probably most often understand me as Pastor Jeline. I want to show you who, do you, who do you think that might be? Any clue? Husband. My husband, yes. Have you, seen, have you seen this man before? Yeah, yeah. Do you know his name? Yeah, Peter. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, he's not usually here with us on Sunday mornings because he is at another church telling people about, yeah, there's more good stuff in there, isn't there? Oh, gosh, get to it, get to it. So, Peter, so, I'm, huh? What are you going to say something? What? We're getting feedback. Um, yeah, that's Peter. So, Pastor Jeline and Peter, yeah. So, I'm his wife, and he doesn't always know me as, <laughs> as pastor. He knows me as his wife. All right, one other, who do you think that is? Who's that? Somebody close? Kind of, that was a few years ago. Do you see the resemblance though? Uh-huh, is that me? Yep, who do you think that is? My husband, Peter. Who do you think those two might be? Our kids, yeah. Have you seen them before? You have? Yep. Sometimes this one comes because he lives close. That's what he looks like now. <gasps> a little bit different, huh? Yeah, and that's what the other one looks like. A little bit different, huh? So they usually call me mom, but they also know that I'm a pastor and they know that I am Peter's wife. And that's kind of how it is when we think about God. Yes, you are so excited for that part, aren't you? Yes. So sometimes we think of God as creator, right? If we are out in nature going for a walk, maybe, we think those are pretty ratty old tennis shoes, aren't they? Who wears those? Me, yes. When I go for a walk, I think of God as creator. When I look at the trees and hear the birds, and smell all of the flowers, I think of God as creator. Sometimes when I make a mistake, though, and I feel very badly that I might have hurt something or someone, then I think of God as savior, as Jesus. What is this? A cross. When you see a cross, who do you think of? Jesus, yeah, yeah. And so sometimes we think of God as Jesus, yeah. Thank you, Hobby Lobby, little wall art. And sometimes when we are working, are you so excited about it? What is that? It is, it's a puzzle. What's it a puzzle of? Can you tell? Frozen. Frozen. Do you wanna build a snowman? Yes, it is a puzzle. So sometimes when we're working on something, when we're kind of putting together a puzzle, do you want to work on that? You can, go ahead, I'll keep talking here. When we're working on something, we think of God as wisdom to help us understand a little bit of what is going on, right? So even though God is creator and God is 
redeemer or the one who forgives us, or God is wisdom and helps us work on things. My goodness, why didn't I have them put the puzzle together first? My goodness, I'm a little slow. Oh yeah, they can stay up there for sure. Um, but that's how it is with God. The Trinity or the Trinity, the three different parts, right? The three different parts there and three different persons of God, but one God. Okay, so I want you to know how much God loves you and how much God continues to show God's self to you, whether in creation or forgiveness or when we're working on things in life. Okay? Thank, we're going to just, amen. We're, you guys just keep working on your puzzle. Okay? Yes, I'm going to invite Pine Ridge forward now to share a little bit. And I'm wondering if, if Pine, Pastor Paige, if you could help them if they need Mike or, yeah. I'm not sure. Come on up, Pine Ridge. I'm going to hang out with these folks here. So maybe if you could be over there. The lectern? The, were, were you guys going to speak from the lectern? Yep. Okay. Are you okay if we're still here? Does that work? <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Randy, can you come to terms with it? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. That would be great. Okay, just a, a quick introduction. We'll let everybody do some talking. I'm Ward. Uh, Randy uh, is also here from Grace Lutheran Church. Uh, together we kind of uh, correlate these mission trips to Pine Ridge. Uh, Sue uh, correlates stuff from St. John's, and Rhonda is also a member of St. John's that was with us on our last trip. And what I'd like to do is to give each of them a chance to talk a little bit about uh, their experiences on this last trip. And if you don't mind, Rhonda, since this is your first time, I would like to start with you and let you talk about what you thought of the last trip. He does that to everyone. He does it to everyone. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. We went to Pine Ridge for graduation this year and were able to see two graduations. We saw the kindergartners and we saw the eighth graders graduate. I think there was eight in each group, was there not? Okay. Yes. And it was wonderful watching their faces, the children especially, the, the kindergartners. They were just so thrilled that they had accomplished something so big in their lives and how important it is to realize that everyone everywhere, that's an important event. I understand, I guess I understood this year what they were feeling because my grandson also graduated just this last week now, so I watched him graduate from high school and and I saw the same look on his face as I had just seen on all the other faces out there. And to me, it just, once again, made me realize that how important life is to everyone, not just to us here in Wasika, but to everyone everywhere on earth. Sure. I'm Sue Erdman from uh, St. John. And uh, we also had a very large uh, garage sale giveaway uh, from, and we thank you for the donations that uh, many of you contributed. Um, I think you can see on the photos there, uh, I, I think we had eight tables full of stuff and boxes because we couldn't fit it all on, on, on the tables. Um, but then, and we set up at two places. And I really liked that um, as we were getting kind of down a little bit or the time was, was about up, um, there was a lady that was looking at stuff, and um, I think it was some uh, baby blankets or something, and, and I said, oh, there's more over here. And she said, oh, I, they're beautiful, I, but I don't need them for myself, so I don't want to take them. And a, a couple other things, she said the same thing. She said, oh, this is nice, but it's, I don't need it. It isn't for me. And you know, I said, but if you know of someone who would like it, please, please take it. And um, after a couple back and forth, she, she did. And it was just great because it was a new contact for us. She um, is involved in a church that um, could use a lot. And at the end, we did um, stop at their church and drop off some boxes of clothing and items that they could possibly use. She was very pleasant to work with and, and I just felt it was a new contact for us. Um, many of you might remember uh, Randy Thunderhawk. Um, he is no longer, I don't think he's, he's probably passed, 
Um, and also Paper Doll, if you've heard of that name, we do not have a contact with her anymore. I think she may be in assisted living or nursing home. Um, so it's nice that we can, can make new friends and, and um, look for future times to be there. Thank you. I am Randy Bennett, I'm from Grace here. Uh, this trip I thought was going to be, we, we were not going to Pine Ridge for two years. As everyone knows, we were not going anywhere for two years. But uh, when we got started going, I just thought this trip would be uh, reestablishing us in our schedule. Uh, so I kind of took it as that. And of course, as soon as I got there, things were new. They're always new, new people on the trip. Um, new people to meet, new places to be. We went to a graduation, in a, uh, two graduations, and we had a huge garage sale at a new place at Red Shirt where they had the graduations. I'll put these programs from the graduation, one for the, I guess this is the eighth graders and one for the kindergartners, and on the back they each, instead of writing their names, they drew something, so they're kind of cool to look at. Uh, basically, I want to thank you. Thank you for all that you do to keep this mission going because without you, we'd just be a truck and a trailer driving to Pine Ridge 500 miles away with nothing to give away. So, from my heart, from all of our hearts, thank you. I, I think the thing that uh, astounded me was kind of, we've touched on a couple of those things. When we went down there, we had an 18 foot trailer that was fully loaded. It had furniture items. It had a ton of clothes, uh, and I think that that's probably not too far from being accurate. And we had a bunch of kitchen equipment. We set up at Red Shirt, there was six tables originally, you see the picture up there right now uh, from the Red Shirt, and we had clothes piled high, packed too high, I thought, to be serviceable on a number of those tables, and then they brought out two more. So we ended up with eight tables, four of them public piled high with clothing that people from Grace and St. John's the community of Wasika have had donated over the past few years. There was also four tables that were covered with kitchen equipment for the most part. There were furniture items set out on the ground. I think there was like four uh, just, just lamps, mm -hmm. that, you know, the table lamps that we had, and uh, four different chairs that could be used for uh, in a, in a living room, there was a desk, uh, there was a entertainment center, uh, a table, you know, just a lot of different things. And this was the first time we'd ever did anything at Red Shirt. And I think that it would be repeatable, but only probably in May, because that's when the parents were all there. And when we got done, we started loading things back up into the trailer to take to our second one, which is at a little town called Por Porcupine. We did that the next day. There, there were two tables, and there was a few things still set in boxes below the tables. By the time we got done at Porcupine, as was mentioned by Sue, we had some stuff left over and made this new contact. There were actually three boxes that they ended up with. Two of them were relatively small. I don't think they were more than that high about like that. One was a lot bigger, maybe like that. They were packed with clothing in there. And we talked to the lady uh, out there. She lives in the barn house next to the church. She and her husband are trying to rebuild or to build their home because it's a slow process. They are able to take $200 a month, $200 a month to buy lumber to try to complete their home. This is the lady that wouldn't take anything that, that wasn't you know, something that she needed right away. We left the clothes with her. She took them into her church. We asked her about furniture on the next trip that she might need. No, no, just give them to people that really need it. $200 a month for lumber to build your home. Give it to people that really need it. I call, that was on Friday. I called her Saturday night and there had already been people over to the church that she was able to take back uh, in, into her church there and, and give them clothing that we had left. 
we have another contact that was very helpful to us and to the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. We will be going again in August. In August, we will do uh, another giveaway, uh, hopefully maybe a couple of them in different locations. We will need to have some more kitchen equipment. That went so fast. The uh, silverware, we had tons of silverware. They went right off the, I don't, I don't think they lasted a half hour. Uh, in fact, I'm quite sure they didn't. Most of our kitchen equipment didn't. Okay, so those are some of the things that we will be needing. And we will be going again in the middle of August. We'll have uh, a list of stuff from school supplies. We hope to take 50 backpacks. So we still need your help to do those things. And we'll be talking to you again after the service uh, in, the, in the gathering area, after the service uh, with coffee. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you so very much for helping us to carry out Christ's mission to be disciples. That's why I picked that verse, is that we are called to go and serve as Christ's head and heart, hands and feet in this world. So thank you so much for allowing us to share our God-given resources and that you continue to share them with others. And as you were saying, these partnerships, these relationships, these people that we've met, new and uh, to reconnect with others that we've gotten to know in the past. An absolute joy. Are you ready to go? I'm planning on going in August, so that's the plan. It should be a joy to be able to get to know some of these people as well. I'm just going to transition. These two are doing an amazing job. So the puzzle analogy is Again, oh ladies, look it. Oh, I didn't empty the box. That was not on purpose. Look it, so we might be able to finish it this time. They just got so excited, and yet we didn't have all of the pieces, and they kept putting it together anyway, and then they said, let's do it again. I know, I know, I know, and what is that sermon? Yeah, no, it, finish it. Yeah, that do we all have that same openness when God calls us to new and challenging things? Do we say, okay, even though I don't have all of the pieces, even though I don't know what I'm doing, let's do it again, because maybe next time we'll have more of the pieces. So you just enjoy um, doing that. We're going to transition now to the third part, if I can find my binder. All right, so we've talked about the Holy Trinity, or Holy Trinity, as we recognize God as three in one, and the different ways that we connect with God and that God connects with us. We've heard about the opportunity to, again, uh, share in the mission that God calls us to, and now this third piece that Pastor Page mentioned, um, our summer series. So is everybody still with us? Did you drink your V8 and eat your Wheaties this morning? So um, this is very exciting, I think, as we enter into this sermon series. Friends in the sound booth, could you advance one more slide, please? Thank you. Perhaps you've seen some of these posters around the church, or maybe you received a postcard to your home, or maybe you've just seen some of the, this logo around. I've been meaning to ask. It is a sermon series created by Sanctified Art. And those are the people who had also brought us the sermon series in Lent. And we had such a wonderful, um, many people had, had just shared a lot of wonderful feedback about those words that we use, the sermon series, how it all kind of came together that we found this series that has been created by those folks. I've been meaning to ask. Side note, I don't know if you know this, but there is real rhyme and reason to the worship services that we help to create as people encounter God through this time of worship. Pastor Paige and I will talk about it and we'll kind of adjust things with the liturgical church seasons. 
So we had Lent, and we went through that sermon series. And then we had the season of Easter, and that was a different series. We used our, our liturgies from Sundays and Seasons. We used the Revised Common Lectionary. Oh my goodness, you're nodding off. We, uh, <laughs> we used the Apostles' Creed. So again, for those of you who notice those subtle differences, even if you don't know what they're called, we recognize that as the body of Christ, we are fed and encouraged and stretched in different ways. So we will stretch some of you and comfort others of you at different times um, through words that we use uh, in worship, through the songs that we sing. Last, in the Easter season that we hung out there for seven weeks, almost all of our songs came from the hymnal. Now this summer season, some of our songs will come from the hymnal, but we've also used uh, some other resources to help us kind of plan our music. Yay! It's all together! Oh my goodness, how do you feel? Are you happy? Yay! Yeah, that's great. I'm good with it. Yeah, I wish I had brought more. I'll, I'll have to do that. Yes. Yep. I'll have to bring more. So we just recognize, again, our, our different ways as we worship, and so it's very intentional. What's that? And breathe. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you said breathe, which that's a good thing. <laughs> or breathe, yes. So we have incredibly talented musicians, as you well know, and we're going to have another one that's going to be joining us, Bree Lawrence. So if you were with us during Holy Week, and, um, um, Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Easter, Devin Lawrence, who is the choir, uh, excuse me, a band director uh, at the high school, he played uh, trumpet and he helped get all of the kiddos, our youth kiddos, sorry, all due respect, these kiddos who are bigger than I am, um, to share their musical talent as well. So his wife, Bree, has been a, a worship music coordinator in a previous congregation. So she's joined in our conversation uh, with our planning and she's also going to be leading worship as well. So again, I know that not everybody is always able to worship every Sunday, whether it's in person or online. And so if you're kind of um, checking in, sometimes you may say, what are they doing? It's, we have rhyme or reason, and I share this so that you can help share the story of how we worship here at Grace with great intentionality and meaning as a way for people to connect and experience God and God's love and grace. So through this summer series, it's, I've been meaning to ask, what's that sub point there? Can you read that? A series for curiosity, courage, and how do you feel when you hear those words? You don't have to answer out loud. Curiosity, courage, connection. At Grace, we talk about connection and belonging, and then that moves us to serve, right? We know that God longs to be in relationship with us. Are we as apt to be curious? Are we, do we long for God as much as God longs for us? Why is that? What's that like? Be curious about that. Do you know that God is crazy about you and constantly pursues you? Are you aware of that? Do you respond to it? Are you curious about that? Courage. Oof, life is hard sometimes, right? We need to have a sense of courage sometimes to navigate, to go forward, just to be to be comforted or comfortable in our own skin, let alone to share God with others. Sometimes it takes a sense of courage to be bold in receiving and sharing God. And connection. Connection with ourselves. Maybe we don't know all of our story. There's parts of our own life that we don't really want to know. And yet, we need to be connected with our own story, which allows us to then be connected with others in their story. 
Sometimes people have very different stories and it's not comfortable for us to know our story or hold space for others as they share their stories. So this summer, we're going to look at that, connecting with ourselves and others. I've been meaning to ask is the overall theme, and then there's four sub-questions that go with it. We're going to spend two weeks on each question. That first question is, I've been meaning to ask, where are you from? And so the first week we will look at scripture from Genesis. And the second week we will look at scripture from John's Gospel. Then it's the 4th of July weekend, so we'll pause and we'll, we'll, we will regroup, and that worship service will be different. And then for the next two weeks we'll head into our next question. I've been, men, I've been meaning to ask, where does it hurt? And we'll look at the story of Hannah and then Jesus' healing stories in Mark. The next week, I've been meaning to ask, what do you need? And we're going to hear about Job and his friends. And then Paul's final instruction to Timothy. And finally, I've been meaning to ask, where do we go from here? Huzzah, friends. We're all asking that, right? Our life at Grace, our life in Wasika, our life in our nation, our life in the world. Where do we go from here? We'll look at the story of Ruth and the story in Acts where Peter, Cornelius, and the Gentiles all connect. These are big questions. They're wonderful questions. I hope that you will be curious and have courage and seek connection as a way to help us kind of move through these questions. The Sundays that we have these services, we're going to offer a time of conversation. So we'll have worship. We'll invite you to grab a treat and a cup of coffee. And then if you'd like to, join us in the youth room and the pastors will facilitate a conversation based on these questions. It's going to be very powerful. I believe it. I feel it in my bones. And as you guys have gotten to know, when I feel something, <laughs> better or worse, you get to feel it too. God is calling us to this time of knowing Him, knowing God, so that we can share God throughout this world. We've always needed Christ in our lives, but more than others, or more than any other time, I think, others do too. And you are the one to help bring Christ to others. I think that's about it, right? Yeah. We're entering into this time of curiosity, courage, and connection, beginning for sure next week in worship. But in the meantime, may you recognize God's great love for you May you seek God stirring in your heart with as much passion and excitement as these two have working on this puzzle. And may you be blessed on the journey. Amen. We're going to continue with our hymn of the day, You Are Holy. It is a gorgeous song. We've sung it before. Maybe you know it. Um, are we going to go through it two times? Yeah, let's go through it two times because it's pretty simple in the first time. So people in the tech booth, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you, if you read music, go ahead and turn in your hymnal to page 525 in the back. You are holy.
If you are able, would you please rise and share with me the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the people. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. One God, giver of life, you established peace through your Son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. God of grace, creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by ecological devastation. God of grace, Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Further, the work of international collaboration and peacemaking. God of grace, abiding comforter, you call out to all who live. Restore severed relationships and protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, illness, or grief. We especially pray this morning for Eileen Johnson, Marjorie High, Julie Zimke, and Nancy Grauman. God of grace. Holy Three. You are community and you create community. Build up ministries that support those who are isolated or lonely. Give endurance as we nurture vile relationships in our congregation and beyond. God of grace. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to pray for those that have served in the military in the past. We especially pray for those who are serving now we pray for Madison Melcher, Matthias Wilson, Sean Holscher, Grant Gallatin, Isaac Den Oden, Alex Ebnett, Dayton Deutsch, and Jeremiah Miller. Give them the courage to fulfill their duties for our country. Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, God of grace. Heavenly Father, we also pray for all of our first responders. We pray for all of the frontline workers. Be with them as the pandemic continues. Be with them and help them. They've put in a long, long two or three years. God of grace. Holy God, we remember your saints for their strong faith and witness, even unto death. Console grieving families. Stir up in us the resolve to end the sin of white supremacy and pursue the courageous path of justice. God of grace. God, every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen.
We continue now in our congregation and time of connection where we share announcements and milestones. And so if you have a milestone, maybe it's something you're celebrating or something we can be praying for, you will come up here and I'm going to unmute this. And you'll say your name, share your milestone, grab a stone and place it in the jar. And then the congregation responds, milestone. So if anyone has a milestone to share, I invite you forward. Or I have a few announcements if you want to be thinking about it. So I thought, okay, I was, yes, we have. <laughs> I'm Karen Simmons. And I'm Joyce Manning. And my daughter married. And, and my son. Mary, got married I, right here yesterday. Yeah. So, and we thank you. My husband, Mark, and I thank you for creating and helping to raise this beautiful woman of God. And we notice that they have three in their marriage because of the base from her and the base from us. So thank you so much. And I'm giving away donuts. Yes, we have, to. <laughs> we have wedding donuts to help share joy. With and you. you're free to take as many as you want home. <laughs> I'm Mary Jenishek, and Friday was a busy day at the Grace Garage. We held our blood drive, and uh, we had set a goal, a pretty lofty goal, of 50 registrations, and we ended up with 45. So I count that a big success. And to get that organized, we had kind of this small but mighty group. It took a little bit of time. We marketed, and we set up, and we attended. And if I could just ask them if they would consider standing so we can give them a hand. I know some of you are here. <laughs> Thank you. But I think the real heroes of the day were those who signed up and registered and came in to donate blood. Of our 45 that we had attended, 20, Twyla and I counted, were Grace members. So we were well represented. And again, if you would consider standing up because I think you, were, you made our blood drive go. If you were willing to come in and donate blood, can we recognize you? Pastor Jolene, was there? Sue? <laughs> For Sue, can I share? She came in, she registered, she gave blood, and then the scale broke on the Red Cross machine, and they said, we have to throw it out. So. <laughs> So anyway, but that's how technical they do it, so I think they're very, very careful. And to that, we say mile. Just a few announcements. You may have heard that we prayed for Nancy Grauman. and I got a call this morning from her husband letting us know she's having a procedure on Tuesday, and so we will be holding her in prayer. Also, today is the last day if you want free pizza ranch chicken on Wednesday. Today is the RSVP deadline. We're having, we have our, I'm sorry, $5. That's almost free. <laughs> That's all, yes, $5. Thank you. $5. Uh, RSVP, I think, by noon today. So you can go home and call uh, and leave a voicemail for Robin. But that is for part two of our listening and conversation nights about the chapel and moving ahead and what the space uh, can and might be used for. So that's this Wednesday, meal at 5.30, conversation at 6. So if you can join us for either one, we would love to have you. Also, don't forget to sign up for VBS. On the link that you've been sent out, you can sign up kids to attend or if you can volunteer in any capacity there is also a volunteer registration on that link and uh, just a reminder as pastor Jolene mentioned next sunday will be our first sunday to invite you to some intentional conversation time after coffee fellowship in the youth room so you can join us as we look at where are you from you thought of something else Thank you for all of the prayers and conversation. I healed quite well. The nurse, when she took out the stitches, said it looks great. So thank mm -hmm. you for putting up with my unique coverings the last few weeks, but everything is wonderful. So thanks yes. be to God. Thank you. Milestone. Milestone. 
Yeah, so next one, Sunday, yes. As she mentioned, Brie Larson will be leading worship on guitar, and she's hoping and working hard to recruit some youth to lead with her. So we are excited for that. Those are all of our announcements and our milestones. We continue with our time of offering and receiving the gifts that God gives us that we can use to change the world and make a difference in the life of our neighbors. So thank you for all the ways you give and all that you can give. The plates will be passed, or if you'd like to give electronically, those are options as well. And as we receive the offering, we will be singing This is the Spirit Entry Now, number 448. Let us pray. Living God, let us continue to share what you have entrusted into our care. We remember you welcome all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal, and once again, reveal your love to us. Amen. We hear these words that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this table, all are welcome. Whether you're a member of Grace visiting, you are welcome to receive this bread and this wine that is the gift of God's grace. If you would like to receive communion as you come forward, uh, we just ask that you place out your hands palm up. If you would prefer a blessing, you can place out your hands palm down, and we'd be happy to speak a blessing over you. It is this first or second Sunday of the month, which means we commune at the rail. So the ushers will invite you forward. You'll start making a line from working your way from the middle out. And when you receive the bread, you can eat it. When you receive the wine, you can drink it. We do have gluten-free wafers and grape juice available. Just ask your servers. I invite you to be seated. 
And as we are welcomed at this table, we sing, I come with joy, number 482.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please stand for the benediction. And this will be our benediction for this series, so uh, maybe it'll end up finding a place inside you during this summer. Family of faith, as you leave this place, may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumptions, the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love even when it's hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you. In the name of the great connector, love itself, go in peace. Amen. And we sing out Canticle of the Turning, number 723. As we leave worship, may we remember to love like Jesus, to connect, belong, and serve.